If you're overseas, it's just moving around a little bit. It's going to move around some more. You know, you walk around and you don't see people covered with sweat today for a change. And uh, the boat's moving. It's a little drier. It's going to get even drier than that, and the boat's going to move some more. So let's get out, tie things down, and make sure we're ready for that. Dang, man. The ship keeps rocking crazy, man. Oh, dude. You almost fell out of your rack last night, I saw. I know, but you don't need to say that. <laughs> yeah, I was, I was grabbing onto my sheets the other night, dude, <laughs> to keep me from rolling out of my rack. Heading down to Australia. Um, the sea's pretty good size, good swells. I think the deck's all the way up to 30 plus feet. I haven't seen pitching decks like this since maybe 1985, 20 years ago in the North Atlantic, and uh, had not seen the deck move quite this much. You would think that five months into cruise that we would be pretty proficient. I think we are, but you know, here we're out doing pitching deck. Do I agree with it or disagree? It's not for me to say. It's probably a little bit beyond where we need to be. Taking off and landing on an aircraft here is, um, from a pilot standpoint, is a is a perishable skill. We've learned over the years that. Uh, a certain amount of practice in certain conditions is required to maintain the capability to do that professionally and well. dangerous than it was actually flying missions in the Gulf. Go get him. We got lucky in the Gulf. The seas are pretty calm. But out here, pitching decks, this is scarier. You still got to come back and land on the boat. <laughs> this is a landing area. You know, it normally looks about like that. All of a sudden, you're kind of seeing it like this, and then seeing it like that. So you have to do all your normal procedures, but now you add to it the visual perception here that is changing, and you can't decide if it's your mind or the boat. That's that's why it's such a challenge. Your brain, when you come aboard, you kind of start to think that the runway is a fixed object. That's what you reference things on, where it's not a fixed object and it's actually moving. It'll kill you in a second. You know, you won't be the first one to fly into the water behind the ship. Or to hit the back of the ship or miss the whole landing area or do a long bolter and end up in the water. It's a dangerous job. Strap the waist, strap the waist, make a ready deck. Paddles, lenses on, you have control. Three and a half to three, glide slope. Targeting three wire. Stand by to recover aircraft. Yeah. What a paddles does is uh, we go up onto the back of the ship and we're there in case the, uh, the pilots need us to help them uh, land their aircraft. For us on the platform, we have simply the plat camera. We have a set of crosshairs on there where the plane should be, right in the middle of those crosshairs. We, uh, we have the radios, we talk to the pilots, we give them more information than they could receive from the ship, basically to help them get aboard. Yes, hello, I'm Katzi. Hi, Paddles. Hey, How are you, Happy Case 3? Oh, yeah, Case 3. Man, the Hummer is going to come first. Okay. Okay. Thank you. One, two, seven, approach, final bearing, one, seven, four, fighting, two, nine, zero. Little power. Easy with it. Uh, 
Chase the deck. Well, when, when you're coming aboard, you're aiming for that uh, third wire and uh, the OK pass. When you don't hit a wire at all, if you put in a little bit too much power there at the end and uh, you touch down past the wires and have to go back around again, it's called a bolter. Just watching. I got some pilots that I worry about. Because, you know, the first thing, you don't want to lose anybody. And number two, the airplanes are pretty expensive, and it's tax dollars. You know, if they go to the bottom of the ocean, there's not a whole lot you can do with them. Okay. If he misses, we'll lock. Wag him now. He's looking pretty good, though. Until he's climbing now. He's... Keep the hawk on him means we need to keep the tanker on him to watch him, because if he misses again, he's going to have to be tanked for sure. 203, round ball, 5.5. Roger ball, 28 knots mobile with. Here we go, see if he lands. Yeah. Down. Down. See ya. Out of there. Keep the hawk on him. Keep the hawk on him, for sure. Yes, sir. He'll definitely be trick or treat for 2.5. Yes, sir. Bye. Trick or treat 2.5. Trick or treat means that, you know, it's like going door to door, trick or treat, and then he's going to give him 2,500 pounds of gas. We cannot afford to have an aircraft that's starved for fuel. The Nimitz is uh, 700 miles away from the nearest uh, divert field. No one was going to make it 700 miles. It's simply a different feeling when you know there's no divert available. There's no safety net out and around the aircraft carrier that you can go to if you have some emergency with your airplane. You have to land back on this ship. Come left steer course, 112 degrees. Come left steer course, 112 degrees, aye. The choices are either to land on the ship or jump out alongside the ship. I'm not uncomfortable with the conditions, so we decided to scrub uh, the remaining night events, but we still had aircraft we need to recover in the dark. you do this business you never you never get used to the nighttime at night your visual is not as accurate as it is in the daytime so you can get vertigo you know they always tell people to respect nature respect the sea never turn your back on the ocean I mean all the little things that you learn it's the same thing you better respect the night Where it gets dangerous, you really got to keep your head up because there's not a lot of lights out up there for us. You got to do everything in the dark. Let's go. When well, we've got uh, 12 airplanes airborne, and uh, we're going to have to launch three tankers to put some extra gas uh, in the air in case guys have trouble getting aboard. The problem with doing that, though, is we also have to land those airplanes. So the more the more people you put in the skies, the more planes you have to land. One of, one of my jobs this evening is uh, to be a recovery tanker for the jets coming down, and, and I'm feeling like basically this is crazy. And uh, wh wh you know what, what's the uh, what's the point of doing all this? When I think I'm going to go, the deck is down, so they actually sit there and wait for another five or six seconds to, so they don't shoot you into the water, more or less. When it comes to pitching deck, I would say that I am uh, uh, more of a novice, or at least my experience has been limited. And I, I know enough to know that the, the conditions we're starting to get uh, extreme would be a, a fair way to, to characterize them.
Look at that. That is like a little oh, snow. Huh? I didn't know a big rig like this could move like this. Having been around for a little while, if I really don't want to be out there, then I don't want my brand new people out there. So Cone, Lieutenant Dietrich, was getting ready to fly one of the tankers. So we had gas for that recovery. Um, it's her first cruise. Uh, we had not done a lot of pitching deck. I told maintenance that I was taking it, and they raided up to the roof and told her, hey, just, you know, stand by. And I said, you know, you don't understand it now, but in about 20 minutes when people start trying to land on this, you're going to realize why I'm getting in this jet for you. seventh guy in a row bolter. You know, I wonder how many tankers I can launch and how long this goes before we start getting some people aboard and recovered. Fifteen bolters or wave off so far. When the ship gets to side to side rolling, it makes your instruments kind of do funny things in the cockpit. So you're just kind of coming down and you're kind of blinking your eyes, trying to make sure you're on center line. Yeah, see, look at it. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, power. 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 Oh, shit. Down, though. Idle. Down, set the hook. Set the hook. Set the hook. Down. And then all of a sudden I'm like, holy cow, I'm a little high. And next thing you know, So now you're in the bolter wave off pattern and you're looking at all these other airplanes that are in the bolter wave off pattern with you. Keep the power on. Oh, it's it's steady. steady. It's steady. It's Turn steady. It. Bingo on the ball. That's yeah, it. Yeah, right. Right. Yeah. 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 Five, 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 five. Seriously, that was the first time I ever really felt like I am about to hit the back of the ship. Uh, I am about to smash into the back of the ship and go into a million pieces. Little power to catch it. Little power. Power. So, uh, you know, you're bringing the power off, bringing the power off, and I'm like, that's, that's all I'm giving you, man. I've never breathed so fast and so hard in my life. It was just unbelievable. I was just, I was, I was shaking. Yeah. <laughs> it was definitely one of the most stressful experiences I've ever had. Steady at a mile, Jar Jar's going around. Here we go, out of there. Wave off, wave off. Now I'm starting to get pretty nervous, realizing that, hey, the, the deck, this is no joke, and the deck is everywhere. Get in here. 
so hard that he bounced over all of the wires. So he skipped the two, three, and the four one. Next thing I knew, I was getting airborne again. And that's when I started becoming very anxious, thinking to myself, well, OK, looking at my gas, hey, I've got about two more two more tries here. And then I'm gonna, they're going to start thinking about giving me some gas. And you know, I don't want to be that guy. I'd like to just get aboard quietly and uh, and have my moment of sheer terror and then go find somewhere just to have an aneurysm and, and uh, call it a day. I always get an eerie feeling when I'm the last guy on board. I'll tell you that. One zero two on course, five miles. One two. There's no one to save you. There's no gas airborne. You got to do what you, you need to do to, to get on deck. Look at that. Deck pitching, he stays right. That's just like sex. What do you guys think? If he goes around one time, it's going to be in his head, and he's going to be pissed off, and it's going to affect his next pro. It's going to take him. <laughs> no, because he's going to get aboard. He's going to be no, like, fucking get aboard. Game. The he's, he's going around twice. I think uh, I'm going to be the uh, I'm going to be the uh, pessimist for the whole uh, for the whole ready room here. I don't think he's getting aboard. I don't think so either. He's starting the Dutch roll, dude. Yeah, yeah, it's all yeah, yeah, just wait. No, he's It's going to continue to get worse. Uh, yeah, he's, I'm telling you, he's going around. He's dude, going he's around. Done. Look at he's oh. going around. He's going around. Oh. He's going around. Oh. Already out of sync. No, no. It's going to settle out. Right there. I'm a D. It's going to settle out. No, it's going to settle out. I don't think so. He's going around. Seven right up off five two. Roger Paul, <laughs> He's going around. I got more black I don't know what to do. Look at that. Oh, steady out. Oh, shit. He's going to get aboard. Oh, rock steady. Sit around, Pat. Oh. Sit around. Oh. Sit around. Oh. Show the low. That's right. Show the low. Show the low. Oh, wait, hey. <laughs> Let's go.